Coach Mangini's here with us. We're talking Texans. FoxSports.com reporter Ben Author says that on paper. Oh, Katanic wrote this. <laughs> Stefan makes Houston one of a the AFC's elite teams. But downside, according to Katanic, the Texans actually don't play on paper. They play on matrix turf with Helix technology. Well, maybe Ken Ken wouldn't joke. have to write your scripts if you showed up to work on time, but uh, you know, Ken is right. Right. Yeah, Good uh, job, so Ken. Go nice. So are the Texans getting too much hype, Nick? Coach, can you see my foot down here? I oh, can. What is this? You know what I'm doing? Don't say pumping toes the down. I'm pumping the brakes just a bit. I thought you were doing a toes down thing. No, just a bit. <laughs> Bruise brand. Listen, I, I really like CJ. Mm -hmm. You can't not be impressed, sorry for the double negative, about D'Amico. And I think they are doing what you should do if you might have and I think do have a stud quarterback on a rookie contract, which is pouring yeah. resources into the team. With all that said, last year – this was either the 12th or 14th ranked offense, depending on which metric Brew wants to like this week. <laughs> and they are either the 14th or 11th ranked defense. So, you know, slightly above average on both sides of the ball with a last place schedule in a division that every other team had their quarterback go down. Hmm. And so with all and the, and so they are they are going a long ways of sending Joe Flacco back into retirement. And what that was. Because if you remember, week 18 was a playoff game, and Gardner Minshew has it down inside the 15 to beat them and then, you know, to send them home. So I, I think the Texans are on the come. I think they're good. I like what they're doing. If I were a fan there, I would feel like salvation is here after three years in the wilderness. Uh, you know, are they real threats for the Arrowhead Invitational? I, I need to see a little more. To so just show up. I, I, I need to see a little more. They are a little, a little more. They're, they think they are. I need to see a little more against a first place schedule and Coach, all of that. They are absolute threats. All right. Now I've said it from the moment they got Stefan. There, I got the Chiefs and the Ravens on one tier, and right below is the Ravens Texans. Ravens on the same tier as the Chiefs? Yeah. Wow. yeah Where's yeah. the board? Because if, they, the if board. they kept <laughs> running the, the ball, Guys if they the kept board. running the ball, they might have won the Super Bowl. Yeah. But – I've got the Texans right below him. But an elite team, absolutely. Uh, you mentioned the rankings of the offense and the defense. They're getting better. And they every sure. rookie, I even, look, I've even said I want to see C.J. do it for a second straight year before I crown him. But every quarterback in recent memory who has had a rookie year even close to his, Big Ben, uh, Dan Marino, that wasn't really recent. No. Russell Wilson, Andrew Luck, Cam Newton, they all proved to be good quarterback, really good. Justin they didn't Herbert like had, yeah. take a, a huge step back. RG3, but obviously injury had something to do with that. So if CJ is going to be this, they added Diggs to a receiving court that's already good. They got Joe Mixon. They add Daniil Hunter to a defense that's already Lose good. Jonathan Will Grimaldi. Anderson's yeah. only getting better. Like. Yep. What's not to like? And the coach, D'Amico Rhines, we've seen defensive players. Antonio Pierce, I know it's early with him. But Vrabel, you know, guys like this have some success. So, coach, I think they are elite and they've got they're right in that conversation with who's going to challenge the Chiefs mm -hmm. in AFC. I thought was, what was most interesting is there's a team in Texas that said they were going all in, and there's a team in Texas that went all in. Thank and you. And what Houston did – First time in history, right, where they added a 1,000-yard rusher, a receiver with 100 catches, and a defensive lineman who's had over 10 sacks, and he actually had 16 and a half sacks. So you go add that amount of talent to the amount of talent that they had already, it's pretty significant. In the draft, they've got nine draft picks. They've got the 12th most salary cap space, so they can still improve the team as, as cuts happen after the draft. So there's that opportunity as well. So all those things, to me, I think are great. And when you look at the division, maybe may, – I know that Nick is really high on, on – I'm not that high on, on the Richard. Jags. I'm high on the – He's Trevor. really high on Richardson. In, oh, in, Richardson. In yeah. Indianapolis. Yeah. He's obviously yeah. an emerging star with his 11 <laughs> completions. <laughs> so there's that. The Prince, we don't know where he is. Tennessee, right. it's a They're new They're trying regime. to go for it. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, see, we'll, we'll see how that uh, unfolds. But – to Nick's point, you do have to pump the brakes because you don't know how the sophomore season's going to play out. Everybody's studying the team. It's, it's a totally different equation. I said this with Detroit. The, there's, there's learning how to deal with adversity, and then there's learning how to deal with success. Oh. So how well they deal with success, and Detroit did a, a much better job yep. than I anticipated. 
how well this team deals with success, expectations. Giants went to the playoffs a year ago uh -oh. and then had a step back. So it's not uncommon to see it go the other way as We're well, even with all the resources that have been poured into this. Coach, last year, CJ had 4,100 yards, 23 touchdowns, only five interceptions. NFL source, former coach, told me, year one, you, as a QB, you learn what you can do. Year two, you learn what you can't do. I don't know if you've ever heard that. Um, what do you, how do you think that manifests for CJ? Also, Coach is the one that told me that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's, it's look, as, as defensive coordinators start to really study you and, and evaluate your strengths and your weaknesses, it's a copycat league. So whatever weakness you have, you're going to get a boatload of it. And whatever strengths you have, everybody's going to work to take that away. So now you've got to see whether or not you can develop a second pitch. And as things get more, more complicated and as the stakes rise, how well do you respond to that? Last year, they're playing with house money. Nobody expected anything from them. Right. So everything they did was, was right. great. This well, year, so the pressure's on. So to me, there's two teams that are in very similar buckets that people are understandably super optimistic about in two different in both conferences. And I just feel my antennae say one of them is going to, we're going to be like, man, what happened to them? And it's the Packers and the Texans. Yeah, I knew right. Because it, both of them essentially had rookie quarterbacks. Right. Both of them as of early November, were on no one's radar. You know what I mean? I'm not talking about the quarterbacks, the teams. They were around 500. Like, eh. And then both of them, the quarterbacks and the teams, got red hot at the end. CJ got hurt at the end. He was having a good year throughout. Won a playoff game or multiple playoff games. And now you look around come August, Super Bowl picks, and they're going to be like a trend, both of them, trendy Super Bowl, like, mm. oh, this is my outside of the box. Yeah. And I just think, I, I know it's kind of a logical fallacy to be like, oh, one of them's not going to reach expectations. But it feels to me like one of them is going to have, from the schedule being tougher to the teams having more tape on the quarterback to some yeah. of the young players' progression not fair. being linear, just, a, you know, Five stub your toe here. I mean, it's too few. Too few interceptions? Too few. Is that the take? But that's uh, what he does. I love when Nick Five? is the voice reason. Thank you, Coach. <laughs> you think he's going to play 17 games and throw? Real. Possibly? No, I'll take Like the Aaron Rodgers doesn't throw picks. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.